Welcome into Sports Memo's betting podcast, NBA, college basketball, maybe a little football talk at the end with our uh, expert handicapper, Teddy Covers. Teddy, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Hey, great to be here, uh, Drew. How are you today? Happy Valentine's Day, my friend. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Happy Valentine's Day to out there to all the listeners as well. Teddy, are you, are you prepared for Valentine's Day? You got uh, you, you got the wife happy? So this is what I do, okay? And not, <laughs> you know, I set up my anniversary. I, I, I set up the anniversary so I would never forget it for the day after Valentine's Day and also for the NBA All-Star break so I'd have a little bit of time to be able to spend with my wife. <laughs> so what I've done... Over the years, is I've been able to kind of push it, push it, and I'm like, oh, we'll do Valentine's Day this weekend. We'll have Valentine's Day anniversary this weekend. So, uh, Karen and I are going on a little staycation. We're gonna, you know, it's, it's, I think what Saturday night and Sunday night we're staying in some hotel, uh, and we'll have a little bit of, uh, uh, of you know, Valentine's activities <laughs> in that regard. But for today, for the anniversary, you know, for Valentine's Day itself, and for tomorrow, our anniversary, no. I'm just working, man. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll do all that stuff over the weekend. Well, as long as she's happy, man. Uh, it, it, and, it, and that was a smart move many years ago as far as uh, anniversary right around Valentine's Day. You can kind of get them all with one pop. And I'll tell you, Teddy, I mean, you're a lot wiser than me, but uh, it's amazing what, you know, a, a dozen roses can do for uh, your happiness in the near future, right? <laughs> uh, it certainly doesn't hurt, although I'll tell you what. It's amazing what a 13-2 and two winning streak can do, buddy. You've been pretty hot lately. I appreciate that, Teddy. Thank you, man. And, yeah, got another 5%er up for tonight. It's just one of those things in this business. When you're seeing it well and the ball's bouncing your way, uh, you know, you, you got to strike while the iron's hot. And it, it, it's just one of those times, Teddy. I know you've had them before. And it's, it's just like I'm seeing it clearly. I'm, I'm making the betting schedule out for, for each day. And, uh, you know, there, there's good ones on the sheet. So, so I'm going with it. And uh, personally, it's feeling good the clients are happy you, you as well you got a five percent or up and uh you're you're hovering around 60 percent in all sports especially in college hoops the last five weeks so hats off to you as well teddy yeah, i appreciate that but uh, i'm not on a 13 and 2 run my last 15 my friend uh best of luck uh with your five percent or this evening i appreciate that and guys we got a coupon code for the podcast v day that's as in valentine's day but just v day v d a y at checkout we'll give you half off any 5% play on the board at sportsmemo.com. Teddy has his 5% NBA game of the month up. I got my 5%er up in college basketball, 13-2 and two run. We got Andrew McGinnis up with a 5% top-rated play in NHL. Also, Brent Crow with a top play in college basketball. So four 5%ers up at sportsmemo.com. It's a huge day on the betting boards, and you can get all of them. One of them, two of them, all four of them for half off using the coupon code VDAY at checkout. Teddy, what do you want to talk first? The NBA boards? Yeah, sure. Let's talk NBA, college, AAF, wherever you want to go, my friend. All right, let's talk uh, NBA first. We only got three games, then we'll hit the college games. We got 5 2 3, 5 2 4, Charlotte, Orlando, 214, the total. Interesting there. Valentine's Day, 214 being the total. Uh, three, that's Orlando laying at home, Teddy. Nice. I, yeah, just keep those Valentine's gigs coming. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Valentine's Day, I'm with you. For anyone out there in listener land who uh, Valentine's Day is not your favorite holiday, uh, I'm with you 100%. This is a fascinating game tonight. It, it really is. On the one hand, to say that Charlotte has owned Orlando is not an understatement. 13 straight wins. For these two divisional opponents, versus Charlotte over their uh, divisional opponent, and I mean, most, uh, many of them haven't even been close. You know, look at the two meetings this year: one twenty-five to one hundred, one twenty to eighty-eight. Both Charlotte blowouts. The last meeting last year: one thirty-seven to one hundred. You know, big time blowout. Um, and now, of course, we're seeing Orlando laying points in a series where Charlotte hasn't been an underdog at any point during this thirteen-game run, and of course. It's a Hornets team. They're pretty extraordinary in one regard. The anti-streak team. Longest winning streak of the season for Charlotte is three. They did that once. Or sorry, longest losing streak was three. They did that once. Uh, in other words, everything. Charlotte's been a great team to bet on off a loss. A particularly great team to bet on off of two losses. Like I said, they've only lost three in a row uh, once all year. They are coming off a loss here, played poorly at Indiana. 
earlier in the week. And by poorly, I mean they could not put the biscuit in the basket less than 33% from the floor in that ball game. So they've been good in this role. But Orlando right now, five, uh, sorry, four straight wins, six of the last seven. The quotes coming out of that locker room are, we want to make the playoffs. We're making a move right now. And certainly if you watch them on their just-concluded road trip with blowout wins at Milwaukee, Atlanta, and New Orleans, from a pure power rating standpoint, Magic are playing well above their season-long number at this moment if they can maintain that focus going into the All-Star break against a team that has absolutely owned them. Really interesting game and a game that I've got a particularly strong opinion on. You can get that play right now at sportsmemo.com. You can get that play, sportsmemo.com. Teddy's 5% are in the NBA. And coupon code VDAY at checkout, V-D-A-Y. We'll give it to you for half off. We got 525-526, Teddy. 435 Pacific tip, New York at Atlanta. 225 the total. Looks like the Hawks land eight in the ATL. Yeah, I, and this is, the you know, you're, you're between a rock and a hard place if you want to bet this game. Uh, you really are. I was looking for a game this year that Atlanta has covered as a favorite, and I couldn't find one. Um, and now they're not just favorite. I mean, they've been steamed up to high heaven in this ball game. You know, open six, bet up to seven, seven and a half. Now I'm seeing pretty much eights across the board uh, for Atlanta. And again, they've only been favored in three games all year, and they haven't covered any of those games. This is not a team that we necessarily trust uh, to win by margin. And you look at their recent victories. They beat the Lakers by four, not by margin. You know, a six-point win at Phoenix, not by margin. Five-point win against the Cliffs, not by margin. You know, two-point at Philly, not by margin. Uh, it's hard to make a case to say, I think Atlanta is going to kill this team. Last time they were favorites, again, uh, they were minus two at home against Orlando. They lost that game uh, by 19, and they haven't covered in this role yet in 2018-19 campaign. All that being said, you want the Knicks? Nobody wants the Knicks. That's why this line is where it is. 18-game losing streak for the number one tanking team in the NBA. How do we know that? Because Cleveland beat them the other night. <laughs> uh, you know, another no-show last night at home against Philly. Now they're on the second of back-to-backs in a complete no-show spot on the road before they all go in different directions for the All-Star break. It's an ugly game. You know, it's a pick your poison. The Knicks are essentially unbackable, and this line is saying the Knicks are essentially unbackable because Atlanta's got no business in this point spread range. That's not the Hawk team that, uh, you know, I like Atlanta plus 10. Uh, I don't like them laying 8 to anybody. And, and, Teddy, you bring up some good points there. I mean, the Knicks on the road right before uh, uh, the, the break here. And a, a, as we get to kind of post-All-Star break, and, and look, it's no secret, tanking becomes part of the handicap in, in the NBA. How much do you factor it in just as far as motivation, guys wanting to win, and, and, and it just playing for the team overall to cover point spreads? Is it 10%? Is it more than 50%? How do you factor it in? Well, for, for in-game betting, it's, 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 it's enormous. Because you know, this day, hey, someone gets off to a hot start. Guess what? They're not winning this game. <laughs> that's not their goal. Uh, so that's one way that I take advantage of the tanking teams on a pretty consistent basis. All that being said, from a full game perspective, you better believe it. Uh, that you're going to find opportunities to fade the teams that don't care about wins. You bet against them at home. You bet against them against other bottom feeders that aren't quite as bad as they are. <laughs> so you can certainly find opportunities to get involved with these teams that are playing for ping pong balls, not victories. Well, finding ways to fade them, whether in-game or pre-game. Good stuff, Teddy. We got, uh, I guess, the late-night game. Oklahoma City at New Orleans. Looks like uh, OKC laying five on the road. High total here, Teddy. 236, 236 and a half, depending where you're shopping. Yeah, I mean, it's just 8 o'clock Eastern time. There is no real, there's no late game NBA on TNT tonight. So they have the one early game, and that's that, uh, which is OKC uh, and New Orleans. And of course, uh, I mean, if you watch the Pelicans the other night, it's. <laughs> It's as bad as it gets. I mean, you know, this, it was it was thirty six to nine Orlando in the first quarter. New Orleans was laying in that ball game, 
you know, Anthony Davis finished with what, like the one made shot or something for the contest. I mean, it was as ugly as it gets. Davis, we stunk. Nobody was interested in playing. That's what it looked like. When you play like that against a team who was fighting for a playoff spot, you should expect that to happen. Of course, that being a 30-point home loss in which they were never in it. <laughs> uh, they were never in the game, not even in the first quarter. It was over after one. Uh, Alvin Gentry, I don't like what's happened the last few games we played. We have to get ourselves back to where we're competing at a real high level and at least giving ourselves an opportunity. We need to put all the other stuff behind us and try to win games, trying to compete, blah, 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 blah. You know the coach's quotes. It is, in theory, a New Orleans spot because that was a particularly embarrassing loss, the one they suffered to Orlando uh, two nights ago. Uh, And in theory... OKC is supposed to take a breath here and have a little bit of a letdown. They played great ball. You know, what do they want? Four in a row, 11 in their last uh, 12, you know, on fire. Uh, Paul George coming off a huge triple double. The theory is OKC is supposed to be looking ahead to the break, and New Orleans is supposed to be trying to make a statement tonight. And if you believe that, you're taking the points with New Orleans. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Because I don't believe that uh, whatever Anthony Davis says and whatever Alvin Gentry says, I'm not convinced that anything is going to get New Orleans out of the funk that they're in. Just a bad basketball team right now, and OKC isn't. And if OKC comes to play, they'll name the score. Teddy, good stuff. Breaking down every game on the board in the NBA. In the Charlotte-Orlando game, Teddy has his 5%er up at sportsmemo.com. Top-rated play, and you can get it for half off using the coupon code (laughs) The day at checkout. Teddy, we got uh, college basketball action as well tonight. Let's hit on a couple games. 6-15, 6-16, Houston at UConn. Houston, the Cougars, man, uh, surprise, I believe only one loss on the season. They've been running through teams, uh, 137, 136 being the total. And it looks like the Cougars laying eight or eight and a half on the road in stores. Uh, how would you look to bet Houston, UConn tonight? I don't want any part of UConn. I know UConn's 12-2 and two at home, and I know they have this home-road dichotomy, but the injuries just continue to mount for this Husky squad, and it's not getting any better for them. You know, uh, you're talking about a team that is playing without their starting backcourt right now, and a starting backcourt that for most of the season was fairly healthy and is no longer uh, a healthy unit, and we saw that. You know, we saw that over the weekend uh, where they, you know, went to Memphis and you know, the big man got into foul trouble, and you know, it's not like the, the Penny Hardaway's team is that great. Uh, and they still lose that game by margin, sneaking under the number. That's on the heels of a loss uh, at Temple in their previous contest. And, you know, the, the, the bodies that they're missing at this stage of the campaign. You know, we talk about Gilbert, who's uh, officially doubtful for tonight. He's not a, a out, per se. Jalen Adams is out. He'll be out till mid-March, but... You know, that duo with Gilbert and Adams out with issues right now in the low post. Charles Carlton was, you know, fouled out after uh, 14 minutes of playing time uh, the other night. One point, one assist, one rebound, one block. Uh, That's not what they need from their big man. And, I mean, all Houston does is win games and cover points. But there's not a ton of value on the Cougs here. You're laying eight and a half on the highway against a decent opponent. But... You know, uh, Houston has continued to win games and cover point spreads. You know, the only loss, as you mentioned, at Temple. And since that time, win by margin at SMU on the road, win by margin at USF on the road, win by margin at Tulsa on the road, win by margin at UCF on the road. They are not a team I have any hesitation in backing in hostile environments, particularly given their defensive acumen. They've been really good defensively on the road and really good They've been really good defensively everywhere, uh, which is bad news for a team that has a guard problem this evening. And, Teddy, uh, breaking down the Cougars here, do you think they could make a run uh, in the NCAA tournament? You know, Elite Eight, heck, Final Four maybe? Um, What, they'll probably be like a four or a five seed, I would guess. How do you think they'll do I don't know if they're Elite Eight. You know, I mean, a a team like Houston would be very, very satisfied with a Sweet 16 run. I think that's where about they max out at. All right, good stuff, Teddy. But a lot of that, I mean, when we talk about that in theory, the reality is that, shit, let's see what the, let's see what the bracket looks like, you know? Sometimes yeah. you're like, this team's got no chance, and then you look at the bracket, you're like, oh, my. <laughs> they do have a chance. And then in day one of the tournament, 
you know, the top three seeds in that bracket go down and you're like, oh boy, now they have a real chance. So it's easy enough for us to sit, sit here in you know February and say, yeah, this team's got a chance, that team doesn't, this team does, that team doesn't. Uh, but the reality is that the matchups will determine which teams actually have a chance, and then the first-round upsets will determine which team has an easy road, so uh, or an easier road. So, um, but in theory, I, I'm looking at Houston as a Sweet 16 team uh, as, as where they uh, where they cap out. Yeah, just kind of like g- general talking about it. I, I what I like to do going into the tournament is, is look to kind of bet on conferences, just because we've had a long time of just conference play. And so, so I would kind of characterize it as like AAC teams and them being the best one. Um, that's how I try to go into March Madness. Do you have any kind of, uh, I guess, blimp view of, of how you look to bet teams in March Madness? Definitely not. I mean, and, and really, there's so much more money to be made conference championship week than there. I mean, the NCAA tournament's a whole lot of fun. And Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday, we're all going to be in action. We'll probably have 15 or 20 bets over the course of those four days, and we'll have a handful more uh, throughout the stretch run of the tournament. But the real money's to be made in the conference tournaments. You know, the, the madness of March begins well before the big dance. And I tend to put a lot of time and effort into the 10 days heading into the tournament. That's where my clients and I have had historically great success. And I'm anticipating the same thing this year. And in those situations... I'm looking for underachieving teams that are capable of making a run in their conference tournaments. Uh, teams that their season-long power rating said, yeah, they're no good, but their talent level says, yeah, they are good, and now's the chance where they're going to bring their A game. Those are the teams I like to ride come conference tournament time. Yeah, Teddy, in, in Vegas, where you are, it's a great time for conference tournament time. What, you got like five or, or four or five uh, conferences that, that do their tournaments there, right? Yeah, every, I mean, literally, <laughs> every venue in town is, is filled. Uh, you know, we've had the West Coast Conference and the Pac-12 and the and, uh, who else? The Mountain West plays here every year. And there's uh, another one that I'm uh, spacing on. Big West plays Big here. West, I mean, it's just, yeah. yeah. Um, it, yeah. It, so, it's. I mean, it's a, it's a great time if you're a basketball fan. You can go around town and go to all these different venues. It really is a lot of fun. Yeah, which which one's your favorite to go to? Uh, they, they have they have arenas at the, the New Orleans, right? Is that a fun one? At the Orleans? Oh, that's a lot of fun. But where do I go conference tournament week? You know where I'm sitting conference tournament week, Drew. Same place I'm sitting on any NFL Sunday. Same place I'm sitting when the March Madness begins, for, you know, the, the, the big <laughs> dance begins. I'm very comfortable in my home office. That's where I get my bets down appropriately. Uh, that's where I can follow the whole of the betting world. It's fun to go out and watch a game every once in a while. I do that at various times during the season, but not in the middle of, my, of conference tournament week. Uh, I don't ever remember being at any of the conference tournament games uh, at any point, even in, even a champ. No, I went to the Pac-12. Uh, I went to the Pac-12 semis one year on a, on I think a Saturday night. I forgot at the at, at the uh, at the new uh, Verizon Center. So okay, or the yeah. Sprint Center or the T-Mobile. T-Mobile, the T. Sorry, the T-Mobile Arena, which tells you how often I go there. No, no, for sure. And it, it, it's just one of those things in, in this business. It's just so much easier when you're at home and you can, like you said, you can kind of take in the whole betting landscape, not to mention get your own bets down. Um, it, well, it, I'm not doing this as a fan. You know, right. it's, it's not about me being a fan. I'm not a fan. My God, my goal is all, very, very simple. I want to make money. All right. I want my clients to make money. <laughs> and, and it's not about, oh, let's go root for whoever. I could, you know, give two bleeps about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, so that's that, that's how we that's how we have to approach it. You know, approach it like a business. Well said, Teddy. And we got uh, two more games here. We'll, we'll head uh, six p.m. Pacific tip in the Pac-12, and then we got one late nighter get back game: Arizona at Utah, one forty-three. The total looks like the Utes laying three or three and a half in Salt Lake. You know, I thought this game was interesting to talk about, just and especially when you look at the line move on it. A lot of money coming for Arizona already today. And this is an Arizona team that has, I mean, how do we describe them? Underachieving is not even the right word. You know, they've been a god-awful disappointment, and it's gotten worse. And, you know, we had the, re, you know, like a very contentious regents meeting uh, for the State Board of Regents where, you know, Sean Miller's assistants are now under indictment. And Miller's, uh, I mean, it really is. And yet he held on to his job. Uh, and, you know, but... What have they now lost? They've lost five in a row? 
You know, they went on the road and lost USC blowout, UCLA blowout, and you know both of those games looking as lost as a team could look. <laughs> uh, and they, uh, they played a little bit better against Arizona State, and then lost in overtime, and then returned home and got smacked by Washington, and then followed that up over the weekend by getting annihilated by Washington State as eleven and a half point home favorites. You know, the offense is in the tank uh, right now, uh, and in the tank. I mean, in their last five games, they've shot 34% from the field. <laughs> That's not going to get it done. On defense in the last five games, they've allowed 51% shooting, 42% from the on the arc. No surprise that they are 0-5 straight up, 0-5 against the spread during this span. Now, is it circle the wagons time? We've seen them. They have one on the road already this year. They beat Cal. They beat Stanford. Heck, they beat this Utah team in the first meeting. They were laying eight. They won by three in OT and never really sniffed a point spread cover in that game. But a lot of that was hot shooting from the Utes in that contest uh, to keep them in it. Uh, Utah was hitting, uh, what, 56% from the field, 11 of 21 uh, from beyond the arc. They found good looks against that Arizona defense. I wouldn't be surprised if they find good looks against them uh, tonight. You grade out the talent for these two teams, it's not even that close. Arizona's got more talent, got more frontline talent. They got more NBA talent, all of that. Hasn't mattered <laughs> uh, for this Wildcats team thus far. And a little bit deeper, too, uh, than Arizona at this stage of the campaign. And coming off back to back road wins at USC, at UCLA, the two teams that I just talked about having smacked on Arizona, I'm very surprised that we've seen as much Wildcats money as we have, although it is worth noting that Utah had lost, what, uh, back-to-back home games and three of their last five on this floor, all in situations where they were either favored or in a near pick em price range, which is what we're in the same point bread range that we're seeing them in tonight. All right, good stuff, Teddy. And, and Teddy, not sure if you were moving a little bit. We were losing you j- j- just a bit. I mean, could still hear you, but just wanted to make sure you weren't touching your, your microphone or anything. And guys, remember, Teddy's got his 5% play up, top-rated play at sportsmemo.com, and you can get it for half off using the coupon code VDAY at checkout. Yep, special for Valentine's Day. Hope everybody's enjoying with uh, their loved ones. If not, enjoy it as a single. We're betting. Uh, I'll be betting tonight watching the games as well. But we got 649 650 Gonzaga, Loyola, Marymount, Teddy, the get-back game, the degenerate special, whatever you want to call it. It's the late-night action we got the Zags laying 19 or ha- and a half or 20 on the road, a total of 139. I think that this is a, a an interesting game in the fact, you know, we got a more talented team in the Zags heading on the road, but you're laying a big number, which always makes it an interesting handicap because it's not just talent. It's how much they want to cover by. It's how much the other team's motivated to stay in it late, you know, down double digits um, to, to, to get you, you know, Possibly the backdoor cover, however you want to look at it. But either way, Teddy, how you looking to bet uh, Zags, Loyola, Marymount? I want to talk about the theory here for a minute, uh, if I could. Sure. Gonzaga for the season has shot just shy of 53% from the floor on offense. They're holding opponents to 38% on defense, under 30% from three-point range. Gonzaga hits their free throw, 76%. They've won the rebounding battle by an average of eight per game. And they're outscoring opponents by 26 points per game this season. Those are remarkable numbers. They are truly impressive numbers. And lo and behold, Gonzaga, who's been a top 10 team all year, a team that nobody is sleeping on, Gonzaga, 18-7 and seven against the spread. Not just moneymakers, big-time moneymakers. So do you say to yourself, what can we do with the Zags moving forward? There might be money to be made with Gonzaga if they go on a big run uh, in the big tournament, in the big dance. You know, if they make a run to the Final Four, they'll probably make some money with them. Between here and there, given that type of statistical profile, which is as elite as it gets given that type of ATS profile where they've covered numbers all year long, given the nature of the Zags, where no, the betting markets do not sleep on this team. 
I have to look at Gonzaga right now as something of an overvalued commodity down the stretch of the WCC campaign. And look, it's not like Loyola's garbage. You know, they're a 17 win team, 17 and 8 on the campaign. They've been real good at home all year. And no, they've got no history of hanging with the Zags, but you know what? They covered last year, both meeting, or they covered, uh, sorry, they covered the first meeting this year. Uh, they were plus 23 and a half on the road in that game, lost by only 18. They covered last year in March. They were plus 19 in that contest. Um, the point spread's wrong for the Zags. And the time to make money with Gonzaga has come and gone. Loyola, to me, would be the clear choice from a betting standpoint. No, they're not going to win the game. They might, but I don't expect them to win the game. But can they hang around? They might be able to hang around for a long, long time in this one. Teddy, great stuff, as always, breaking down the NBA and college basketball. Wanted to ask your your opinion on uh, the new football league. I know that you, you, you made a, a name for yourself and really made some money for yourself, for your clients in the arena football league. And, and just in my opinion, you know, the, uh, the AAF is what I'm talking about, the, the new football league for, for anybody uh, kind, kind of not familiar with it. And, and there's lines out at multiple sports books, both offshore and in Vegas. So it's bettable. And in my opinion, something new like this, not a lot of uh, what statistics behind it for odds makers to put numbers out. We saw it in week one, just a kind of a lot of plain numbers. And sure enough, no game fell in between the number, meaning, uh, you know, if it was minus four, no game fell three. So it, it, it was like the odds makers were off, you know, and, and it's nothing against the odds makers. It's a hard job to do something like that in a new league. In my opinion, it's very beatable. Just wanted to throw it out there to you in, in your overall thoughts of going at a new league and trying to really make some money betting it. And also, uh, if you're looking to lay down personally on week two, week three, anything uh, in the near future in the new football league. I have not made a bet yet for week two. I may. Uh, I paid attention week one. And you you want to talk about the concept of what you want to be doing here. Because really, this is where we're watching a betting market getting created from scratch right now. There were no power rating numbers in the AAF for anybody had going in the the preseason. And the markets were like, all right, every home team's three. (laughs) Uh, uh, I mean, there there weren't a whole lot of strong opinions uh, about – who should be valued as a good team and who should be priced as a lousy team. Although we're definitely seeing that for week two, namely any team that's starting Christian Hackenberg at quarterback (laughs) uh, is, uh, is being viewed as a bet against squad right here. Although I haven't heard for sure that Hackenberg's going this week. Uh, I can't imagine they'll trot him back out there again. That was pretty rough Uh, in week one. Number one, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Memphis express, but the concept here is simple. All right, the good teams are going to be undervalued. The bad teams are going to be overvalued. The key is being able to identify what is actually a good and a bad team and what was a week one blip. And that's not always easy to do. So I'm going to take it nice and nice and easy. You know, I'm going to absolutely pay attention to the games every week. I'm going to go through the box scores. I'm going to go through the recaps. I'm going to go through the waiver wire. And we'll see. If I find something to bet in a week or two, we'll start putting out AAF uh, uh, plays. Uh, if I'm betting it, I'm happy to give my clients to bet it. And, but until I make, uh, until I start betting it, I'm not going to start putting out plays. You know, oh yeah, bet this. Even though, uh, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. Uh, at least not in my world. Uh, I'm sure there are plenty of touts out there that do that, but uh, I don't feel comfortable with that. So uh, when I start betting it, I'll start releasing it, and it's just that simple. And, and do you, what, what similarities do you see in, in this new league, in, in the Arena Football League, which you had success, you know, not, not too, too long? Not a ton. Not a ton. I mean, I mean the, the, the one concept is very similar. I guess, the, I mean, the one thing, Arena Football League, you're, really, you're betting on offenses more than defenses. And I, I think that's the case initially for the AAF. If you can find a good quarterback and a decent offensive line, that's going to be a bet on team. Um... You know, in the Arena Football League, where there aren't many stops, it was the teams that could generate touchdown on every, you know, the consistency, touchdown on possession, and the next possession, and the next possession. Those are the teams I wanted my money on. Uh, so you're, a lot of it has to do with the quarterback and, and the play of the offensive line. That's my initial handicapping focus in this league. Teddy, anything else you want to uh 
throw out there to the listeners, sports betting landscape, uh, NBA, college basketball, anything you want to throw out before we shut Let's this Let's talk down? about Valentine's Day, man. <laughs> right. uh, number one, if you got a date, if you have a wife, if you have a girlfriend, enjoy yourself. Number two, if you don't, don't. It. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> uh, it's all good, man. Um, don't, uh, don't let today get you down. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, no, not at all, man. It's a, it's a good day. Good day to be a sports better. And, uh, yeah, if you got your girlfriend, you got your wife, keep her happy. It will make your life a lot lot easier going. But uh, it's a big night for sports betting, Teddy. And we got four 5% top plays up at sportsmemo.com. And you can get all of them. You can get one of them, whatever you want, for half off using the coupon code VDAY. That's V-D-A-Y at checkout at sportsmemo.com. Guys, best of luck with your bets. We'll be back tomorrow talking college basketball. And, uh, yeah, enjoy enjoy the night. Enjoy Valentine's Day. And uh, best of luck. Talk to you tomorrow.